New Zealand outlaunches Russia. Iran keeping quiet. For now. Belarus dictator Lukashenko threatens own officials. Elon Musk promises to set Maduro's mustache on fire. Austria is giving up on Russian natural gas and the biggest news? Turkey and China cancel Russia. Isolating it, helping the Western sanctions. Putin's last hope has just disappeared. Howdy, howdy, friends. My name is Konstantin. Welcome to Inside Russia, the place where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian. Every Wednesday, I give you my takes on important world news that you will not find anywhere in the mainstream media. Let's start with New Zealand this week. This news actually makes me proud of the good people of New Zealand. New Zealand has surpassed Russia in the number of successful space launches in 2024, having already conducted 10 launches compared to Russia's 8 launches. Last year, 2023, Russia's Vostochny spaceport had three launches, while New Zealand's Mahia had seven. Both New Zealand and Russia spaceports were built in 2016. It's unbelievable. Russia was first in space. Sputnik, manned flight, spacewalk, used to be the space exploration powerhouse on the cutting, cutting edge of research and technologies. And now it's losing to New Zealand. I was going to say, you know, Putin has destroyed Russia. But no, it is us who destroyed Russia. Our generation, my generation. We were given this incredible opportunity, such once-in-a-lifetime chance back in 19, 1991 and we failed to transform our country from communism to greatness. We were so preoccupied with making quick money and burning it, having fun, making up for all those years of Soviet oppression that we let a group of criminals to seize the power and bring the evil empire back. But that's another story. You go, New Zealand. I'm really happy for you. Another important news comes from Iran. It looks like Iran is not going to retaliate the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Haini. Israeli intelligence has discovered that Iran and their Lebanese Hezbollah allies have lowered the readiness level of their missile force. Israel will not be striked. And it looks like the peace negotiations on Gaza will happen soon, or actually happening. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. This information was released by the New York Times. The reporters cite unnamed American officials, and I hope they're right. And another news comes from the USA. <laughs> the number of bankruptcies in the United States has risen to the highest level in the last 13 years. Check out this picture. Guess where I got it from? That's right, from Russian propaganda. They were showing this picture, although it's in English, but they were showing it. They don't miss anything negative about the USA. Even the little tiniest things. As for the bankruptcies, yes, they are on the rise. It is disturbing. But hey... <laughs> We've known that fact for many months now. The USA is on the verge of another economic decline, and it's going to follow a big economic expansion, and that's how the economies work. The number of bankruptcies rising, it's not the end of the world, you know. Let's hope that this economic decline won't be a big and long one. But my gosh, Russian propaganda pokes its nose into every single little tiniest hole it can find. And the next news comes from China, and it's about real bad weather. Look at this. Look at these cars, you know. I wonder what kind of rain should happen for all of this to be, <laughs> to be this.
folks in China are, are having it rough. And China generally is having a very rough summer, just like Russia. Houses, people, roads have been demolished, as you see, and uh, rains happen often this summer for some unknown reason. The Ministry of Emergency Situations of China estimated the damage that, that happened in July due to bad weather being around 76.9 billion yuan in dollars that amounts to 10.1 billion holy moly that's some bad weather well let's jump to the next news and that's from belarus countries dicta uh, democratically elected president alexander lukashenko promised no mercy no forgiveness to his own officials Lukashenko said what he would do to the corrupted officials. Now, check this out. Я буду вас поддерживать, лечить, кормить, что угодно делать. Единственное, не смогу вам помочь, если вы будете неблаговидными делами заниматься. Guys, I will support you, treat you, feed you. I will uh, provide health care. I'll do anything. The only thing that I will not be able to help you with if you do unseemly things. Corruption is out of the limits. For me, it's beyond limits. There will be no forgiveness to you. I will not help you. I won't be able to help you with if you are through the corruption. Please hear me. Даже если вы где-то на дороге нашли и где-то что-то припрятали, ну, кажется, никто не видел ничего подобного. Тайны не будет, жене сказали. No one has seen it. I will find out. Начинаем проверять. Вот I will find он сидит, он этим Don't do it. занимается. Потихоньку, двое суток, все. Все вскрыто. О, oh бой. There will be no forgiveness from me. Belarus president telling everyone, his highest government officials, on camera, on television, live, in front of the entire country. Forgiveness? Forgiveness from the president? Huh? When you hear this, that your president promises forgiveness or no forgiveness, run, run! In a country when president forgives corrupted authorities or chooses not to forgive, whether you know they are at president's mercy in a country like that things are not well an independent court system must decide fate of corrupted officials they must be judged fairly according to the book of law but not be forgiven by the president well this is belarus for you today in 2024 the president chooses to forgive or not to forgive corrupted officials. The next news is from the USA. A couple weeks ago, Venezuela's dictator, <laughs> another <laughs> um, democratically elected president, he went ballistic on Elon Musk. And his name, of course, is Maduro. Check this out. I'll remind you. Hello, Musk. Quien se mete conmigo, se seca. Quien se mete con Venezuela, se seca en los mods. ¿Quieres pelea? Vamos a darle en los mods. Estoy listo. Soy hijo de Bolívar y de Chávez. No te tengo miedo en los mods. Vamos a darlo, pues. Elon Musk Donde challenged quiera. him to a fight, as Como you see on Caracas, Twitter. En los barrios. Si tú quieres, yo quiero en los mods. ¿Di dónde? After this uh, very emotional speech, I can't help laughing, you know. <laughs> so after this very emotional speech, um, Venezuela's dictator Maduro blocked the social network Twitter, or X, um, in Venezuela for 10 days due to the fact, and that's how he explained, that Twitter, or X, incites hatred and fascism. Hmm. He incites fascism. Look who's talking. <laughs> well, 
Well, that is old news. It happened three weeks ago. But the the, the real news is that, um, and I'm, I, I like that very much. Elon Musk just came back to Maduro and he promised to set Maduro's mustache on fire with lasers from space. You go, Elon. <laughs> I'd love to watch that. Let me know when you're going to do that. And please televise. <sighs> oh, well, before I jump to the next news, I want to update and thank you. Still demonetized. Still no word from Google. And that's the bad news. The good news is that I'm still alive. I'm breathing and I have a voice. Inside Russia is up and running. And monetized or demonetized, I will be doing live streams and videos every single day. Money is very important, especially now, but it's not the priority. And I also have the great news. The great news is that I've been receiving so much support from you. I am absolutely overwhelmed, you know. Google had to turn monetization off just for me to see how 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 much care and love i receive from you from from the community you know thank you thank you thank you thank you so very much i promise that i will keep on going monetized or not and let's jump to the next news and it's from italy where a restaurant raised the price of hawaiian pineapple pizza by 10 times to 100 dollars and um, check this out. This is probably the most expensive Hawaiian pizza in the world. Why? So that uh, no one would buy it. The media called the high price a compensation to Italian chefs for cooking foreign food that Hawaiian pizza is to them. Let me tell you, only in Italia. Anyone feeling like a Hawaiian pizza right now? A slice? <laughs> Give me a slice of that, please. And the next news comes from Austria. 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 Such a fantastic country. I have very good memories from Vienna. Um, I took my family there. Anyway. So, good news comes from Austria. It will abandon the use of Russian natural gas by 2027, which is really around the corner. Austria's ruling political coalition has agreed to include the abandonment of Russian natural gas by 2027 in the country's new security strategy that they're taking. Well, um, they're creating and they, uh, you know, trying to approve. This is the counselor or chancellor of Austria. At the moment, the decision is being finalized. The Austrian government also believes that dependence on Russian natural gas threatens the Austrian economy and security. My God! We're looking at the demise of Russia's largest company, Gazprom. Gazprom had it made. It didn't have to do anything. Long-term export contracts and all extracting and transporting infrastructure, you know, the pipelines, the pump stations, they, everything was inherited from the USSR. All they had to do was just to keep it going and raking money in. And they were doing that for 22 years. And now it is over. Done and done. Russia currently is an irony, a tragedy, and a farce, all happening at the same time. <sighs> We're seeing the demise of it. This is it. The next news comes from China. China is preparing companies um, that produce robots to patrol and control people. Check this out. Now, a warning. I cannot be 100% sure in authenticity of this video. Extremely hard to fact check. I tried and tried. What I know for sure is that the Chinese, they have been working on this technology for quite some time. I personally hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. I guess living in Russia when it was going down the drain to high 
hell and wastewater, I became became allergic to any kind of people control. Just like these robots. I absolutely hate it. I I think that people deserve better. And I hope this is not our future. And the next news also comes from China. Um, now the authenticity of this video is 100%. That's guaranteed. I just want to show you how the workers of this Chinese warehouse work. Now, who needs robots if you have workers like that? That's probably one of the warehouses that um, Amazon or big companies use to ship products from the U uh, from China to the USA, you know. Insane. The next news comes from Taiwan, and um, I absolutely love the guy who is in the next video. He's, he's just great. During a meeting of the Taiwanese parliament, one of the senators, or deputies, whatever they called, stole a bill that he didn't want it to be passed. During the consideration of the initiative to expand the powers of the parliament, a scuffle broke out. One of the senators torn out the document and ran out of the door with it. Check this out. I love this guy. I absolutely love this guy. Uh, I want to check it out once again. Out of the door. He should play American football. <laughs> he avoided everyone. This brilliant strategy worked, believe it or not, but not for a very long time. Later, the bill was returned onto the parliament floor, um, and it was uh, it went through further considerations. Friends, before I jump to the most important news of uh, the week, no, the summer, perhaps the entire 2024, I'd like to ask you a favor. Please like this video, only if you liked it, of course. Then choose three news that you like the most, and write them down below in the comments. I would love to hear your feedback of what interests you the most of what I speak. Thank you so very much. And the last and two most important news of the week, again, could be the most important news of the year. They come from two countries, Turkey and China. First, from Turkey. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Galuzin met Turkish ambassador in Russia, a Turkish ambassador, his name is Tanju Bilcik. They met in Moscow. Now, listen to this very carefully. The deputy foreign minister called for Turkey to refuse to participate in the destructive policy of the West towards Ukraine, supporting Ukraine. This hugely important news this meeting was mentioned as a tiny news piece in Russia's information agency called TASS. I should say it was barely mentioned. An equivalent of a newspaper somewhere on the last page on the bottom on the small print. That type of thing. The second news came from um, the South China Morning Post, a major Chinese newspaper. And this news is the bomb. I have not seen anyone talking about it in Russia yet. I'm the first one. Sila Sibiri 2. The power of Siberia 2. The project of building a new gas pipeline transporting up to 100 billion square meters of Russian natural gas. The project that Putin was betting everything on has finally, quietly been abandoned. And how do we know? The Mongolians are informing us. Mongolia, the country where 2.5 thousand kilometer long pipeline was supposed to pass from Russia to China, did not include the Gazprom gas pipeline into the National Development Plan until 2028. Before, 
Russia offered Mongolia, in addition to transit revenues, to also receive gas from the pipeline with a design capacity of 50 billion cubic meters per year. But Moscow failed Сил, сила Сибири-2. Сила Сибири-2. The power of Siberia-2. The project of a new gas pipeline transporting up to 100 billion cubic meters of Russian natural gas from Russia to China. The project Putin was betting everything on has been quietly abandoned at last. How do we know? Well, the Mongolians speak. They keep us informed. And the Chinese paper writes about it. Something you will not find in the news. There hasn't been, and I'm pretty sure there will be not. Mongolia, the country where 2,500 kilometer long pipeline was supposed to pass from Russia to China, did not include the Gazprom gas pipeline into the, the National Development Plan until 2028. Before, Russia offered Mongolia, in addition to transit revenues, also to receive gas from the pipeline with capacity of 50 billion cubic meters per year. But Moscow failed to reach the agreement with Beijing. Former Mongolian Security Council member Munknara Bayard Lavga told C, uh, the, 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 the Chinese newspaper, I quote, We are entering a long pause because Moscow no longer believes it can get a deal it wants from Beijing. And the project is probably postponed until better times. I unquote. Stuff sounds like music. The first news was at least mentioned in the Russian news, in the Russian media. And the death of Sila Sibiri too, well, <clears throat> you have to read the Chinese newspaper to learn that. Russian people are absolutely clueless. They remain in the dark. Why do I think it's huge news? Why did I make this news a headliner? The headliner, because these two news show us that Vladimir Putin has lost and his days are numbered. Yes, I'm making this pretty bold statement. And yes, I think that um, these two news are very good indicator of that. Invading Ukraine two and a half years ago, Putin counted on Turkey and China to bail Russia out. And you know what? They were bailing Russia out for two years. Turkey and China were helping Russia exporting its oil and were selling their products to Russia or helping to transit products from other countries. Everything Russia needed, really. That changed half a year ago. Turkey bailed out first. The Americans warned that uh, they will not spare Turkish economy if it continued helping Russia, waging the war in Ukraine and avoiding the sanctions. And in January, Turkey completely isolated Russia. Recep Erdogan stopped talking to Putin, his body, former body. And the trade between the two countries um, has halted. And that was a bloodline for Russia. And the very same thing happened to China. The American warning halt of trade and Putin's high hope on replacing Europe with China for exporting its natural gas, has just died. Both Turkey and China have decided to stick with the world and to turn away from Russia. And the country where I was born and grew up and spent a good part of my life is completely alone now. It's isolated, sanctioned, cursed, and abandoned by everyone. 
Putin lost his game. He's on the way down now. There's no question about that. But the tragedy is he has taken Russia along with him. And it's a done deal. Russia is also on the way down along with its people. I actually think that Putin's days are numbered now. Tomorrow in the live stream, I will explain why I think so and what Putin has been trying to achieve by traveling in the last days. The link for tomorrow's live stream is right over here. Please tune in tomorrow. It'll be interesting.